So in this video, I will show how you can use AI to prepare your lectures much, much faster. You will be surprised how fast it is. And you might think there's something unethical to let AI to do your preparations for lectures, but please watch the video and you will see that the method I'm showing, there's nothing unethical in it. But please watch the video all the way to the end, as I will be also showing the way you should not be using, using AI. And it might be not clear that you shouldn't use it this way, but let's get into it. So before I, I jump to the screen sharing and chat GPT, few words about the tool. So at least currently it is free to use. There's also premium version, which should be a little bit faster to use, but I've been using the free version and it has been working just fine. And ChatGPT is an AI based tool that can generate text in a human like way by you providing it prompts to do. And you can give these prompts in a normal written language. You don't need to do it in a specific way. It understands the human writing and you can get the text and you can refine it by giving it additional prompts. And it's been trained on vast amount of data. So it has quite a bit of knowledge of different things. So let me jump to the shared screen and let's see the method. Okay, so I'm here in openai.com, so you can get here just by registering and clicking try to GPT. And this is the window you will see when you start and you can write your prompts here. I have done my prompts already here to make this a little bit faster. So we don't need to wait for GPT's replies. So my prompt has been as follows. I'm preparing a lecture to graduate level student of health sciences. So I'm giving context that what I'm doing. The topic of the lecture is measurement of sedentary behavior and physical activity. I would want you to act as a university lecturer. So when you provide a prompt to chat GPT, that what it should act, it will use the language of that professional or that character. And then I'm saying, please create three to six bullet points from the text I provide. Just my style of presenting. I like to have three to six bullet points on each slide. You can change the numbers. And I also say that do not have more than six words in each bullet point. Again, I like to have very short bullet points that the students or the audience don't start reading the slides for a long time, but are actually listening what I say, but they can just see the structure there. If you like to have more words, you can have, have a different prompt. Then basically I said, please create bullet points of this text. And I have our ebook here. I'm using this ebook now because I just happen to have it and I can copy paste the text from the ebook, you could be using, using any, any content you have in the electronic format. And if you don't have something that you can copy paste, you can take a picture and you can open the picture in Google file and it will actually kind of the AI will read the letters and then you can copy paste it. So basically I'm just taking the introduction text here and fully and just copy pasting it to chat GPT. So I said, please create bullet points of this text and it provides me six bullet points, not more than six words, definition of physical activity and sedentary behavior, volitional versus spontaneous physical activity, sedentary behavior and its characteristics, limitations of traditional questionnaires, advancements in device-based monitoring assessment of complex patterns of activity and sedentary time. And I think these are great bullet points. I wouldn't need to change anything on those. And then to make the lecture 
a little bit more interesting. I told the prompt that can you provide a historical story or an anecdote of one of the point points to make the lecture more interesting. And sir, here's an anecdote related to the limitation of traditional questionnaires for measuring physical activity. And it tells about study in 1990s in University of Minnesota that actually large number of participants were reporting that they spent exactly 160 hours per week in engaged in physical activity. So 24 hours per day and probably some participants were just filling the questionnaire in a way that they can do it as fast as possible. And I haven't checked whether this is, this is true, but if you will use this kind of anecdote or historical story in your lecture, please do fact check it might not be correct. And then I again set the problem, can you create bullet points of this text? And I went to our ebook to next part and just copy pasted it. And ChatGPT came up with these bullet points, importance, energy expenditure and physical use of meds to categorize. And those bullet points look good again. And it remembered my prompt that, uh, make three to six and don't use more than six words. And again, I gave a prompt. Can you provide a history to the story an anecdote? And it gives a story about Nobel prize winning physiologist, Dr. A.V. Hill and how he, his work had an effect, how metabolic equivalents were developed in the future and A.V. Hill is a Nobel Prize winner and he has been working on the heat production of muscle. So this, this could be very much true, but like I said, you should fact check these because it might not be correct always. And then I continued doing the same, just asking to create bullet points for the text and, and getting good, good results with it. So all in all, I think this makes really fast to create presentations. So I hope you find this information valuable. And if you do, please click like and maybe subscribe. That will help me a lot to get visibility for this video and encourage me to do more videos like this. And here will be some suggestion of videos that you will like and probably a channel button and subscribe button somewhere here. So thanks for watching. And one more point I forgot to say, you don't need to say please when you prompt it and you don't need to say thank you when it provides the answer. If it happens to take over the world, you really, really hope that you would have said thank you.